Subscribe to both of my YouTube channels, Sharon Winbush and God is Sharon. Turn on notifications and share videos globally. Thank you. Press my name below this video and that will take you to my channel where you will find more videos on this subject and many others. The R. Kelly trial in Chicago that began August 15th, 2022 is now in week three. His brother Bruce Kelly, uh, Robert's older brother, has been going to the trial and giving me updates uh, on what's going on and what he's seen. And Bruce has been around Robert all of his life. Bruce, being the oldest brother, has been with Robert in the home, in the studio. He toured with him as a tour manager, uh, played bass with him, were in groups and bands together, performed on some of Robert's music. So Bruce knows just about everybody that's testifying, and he's giving a very good perspective on what he's seeing. The take-home message is the government has taken people and threatened them that if they didn't testify, they would prosecute them. So you have people being forced to t testify and also being bribed. They're being given uh, apartments and money and trips and endorsement deals and all types of things. So they're not credible. The stories they gave in the previous trial is very different from the stories that they're testifying to right now. And so what we see consistently is lie after lie after lie. You don't know what to believe because they, most of these people testified in the previous trial, which is double jeopardy. Uh, they're coming back for this trial and they're saying the complete opposite. They're saying basically the, the buzzwords that the government put in their head we were abused, he took advantage of us, when in fact, if you think of any musician, any group, they all have groupies, they all have fans, people that want to have sex with them. They want to be with a rock star. They'll get fake IDs, they'll chase the tour buses around, they'll sit in the hotel lobbies, if they see these people, if they can get to them in any way, shape, or form, they want to be around the fame, the money, the glitz, and the glamour. And Robert was a sex symbol of R&B. He was young, he was attractive, he was hip, he was cool. He was what the young girls liked. They wanted him as a boyfriend. They wanted him... Uh, first and foremost to be in a relationship with him but then if they had musical aspirations they wanted him to turn them into Aaliyah make them an Aaliyah project so we're seeing the Aaliyah effect throughout this trial Aaliyah met R. Kelly and he worked on an album for her age ain't nothing but a number it went number one it garnered her enormous success. Every young female wanted to be her. Every young female wanted to emulate her. So R. Kelly became a target of females wanting to be famous and successful and beautiful like Aaliyah. So not only was Robert a sex symbol and handsome and athletic in his build and an artist he put out an artist that gained enormous popularity so he had females coming at him from every direction for all types of reasons for number one to be with him sexually so they could have bragging rights to say I'm with R. Kelly to be his uh, girlfriend to work their way to the position of wife, to try to get pregnant and have a baby. And if they had musical aspirations, 
for him to do a song for them, to make an album for them, to make them rich and famous and successful like Aaliyah. Robert was a target of young females, middle-aged females and older females. It's the nature of the music business. So thus far into week three of the trial, we've learned basically that every person that got on the stand is lying because they told one story when the prosecution asked them questions and then Jennifer Bonjean and Daryl McDavid's attorneys, because they're co-defendants, were able to discredit and uh, expose lies from every single witness. There's not one witness that got on the stand that was not impeached by their own testimony. And that's incredible. So what we're seeing is a farce of a trial. The same with New York. You have groupies, studio thoughts, studio hoes, young females who were fans who wanted to get to R. Kelly to get a career, to get money, to get fame, to have a baby, to whatever they could get. But what no of these, none of these people had was anything to bring to the table. That's the common denominator. All these people wanted something from R. Kelly, but none of them had anything to bring to the table. None of them had anything to offer R. Kelly except sex. There were no diamonds in the rough. There were no talented individuals that he could make stars out of. He was working with scraps. So they knew they didn't have the talent. They knew they didn't have the work ethic. They knew they didn't have anything to offer him. So they offered their bodies. They offered sex. They willingly did things sexually because that's all they had to bring to the table. There was no intelligence. There was no work ethic. There was no talent. There was nothing that they could um, make of value to him. So all they could do is aggressively pursue him, aggressively uh, try to appeal to him sexually so that they could get him to do whatever they wanted him to do for them. They were manipulating him. They were using him. I've seen it time and time again. When a female doesn't have anything to bring, when she doesn't have anything to offer, she uses sex. And she hopes that she can manipulate you sexually by um, talking sexually over the phone, telling you things that she's willing to do, being willing to do those things. And she thinks... The sex will pull her through, that it will get her somewhere that her talent and her education and her intellect can't. This is a global prob problem. Globally, people do this, male and female. They use sex to climb the social ladder. They use sex to um, come up in life. And this situation, when you have an artist that is young, sexy, uh, an icon, a sex symbol, who writes hit after hit after hit, and who's making other artists uh, famous and rich, he's going to be a target. They saw what he did for Sparkle. They saw what he did for Aaliyah. And others wanted that for themselves. So they targeted R. Kelly. And his brother is there getting us the details. And as soon as he goes live, I will let you guys know. I haven't seen one credible witness on the stand, including Roshana Lanfair, who is the person that was allegedly on the sex tape from 2002. The fact that she was forced to testify. The fact that the government allegedly gave her a Section 8 apartment. The fact that they gave her money to live. The fact that uh, they've been cozy with her and giving her trips and uh, vacations and basically buying her testimony, bribing her, uh, according to sources, says uh, what you are getting from her can't be trusted. So... 
this entire case has been manipulated and um, used by the government because they followed a TV show to get somebody arrested. They watched Surviving R. Kelly. It was an emotional, scripted television show. And based on public demand, they had to go after who the show was about. And when they interviewed these people, they saw none of these people were credible. None of these people had evidence. None of these people went to the police. None of these people um, even had evidence to support their statements. Females went on Surviving R. Kelly because it was an opportunity for fame. When you look at the place that we're in right now, the convergence of social media, reality TV, and the Me Too movement, you're getting all of these fake victims, false victims, people who volitionally went to studios, volitionally targeted entertainers, volitionally wanted to have sex with them to get money, to get a come up, to get fame, to get a record, whatever it is that they were looking for. They were using their sex to get something out of the artist. And now when it's popular because of Me Too, they're claiming they're a victim because that can also get them money and fame and popularity and relevancy. Their stories don't add up. Their stories are not consistent. Not one person went to the police. Not one person uh, filled out a police report. Not one person went to a doctor. Not one person went to therapy. 100% of these women, it appears to me, wanted to have sex with a rock star. They targeted him. They had sex with him. And now that the money has ran out, they're going on the other side to play victim so they can extend their 15 minutes of fame and get a little more money. That's what this trial looks like to me, same as the New York trial. Mainstream media is only reporting what the prosecution says and does, what the witnesses say upon questioning by the government. When it comes to the defense team, they're reporting very little. They're not covering the lies that are uncovered. They're not covering the discrepancies of the witnesses and they're not c covering all of the um, testimony that is being countered by the defense team. They're not showing how these people are being discredited. That Lie after lie after lie. Mainstream media is not reporting that. So you can't even trust what you're hearing in the news because it's painting one picture and it clearly is a monopoly on the perspective they want to paint in the public eye. That's not a free press. That's not fair journalism. That's called a dictatorship. You are controlling the narrative. You are controlling what the people see and hear. They're not reporting fairness straight up the middle. This is what the prosecution did. This is what the defense did so that the public can make their own decisions. They are reporting 99% in favor of the government, in favor of the prosecution, with little sprinkles of what the defense is doing. And so it gives the public the perception that Robert is guilty. It gives the public the perception that all of these lying thoughts are telling the truth and it gives the public the perception that the government got it right, surviving R. Kelly was correct, and all of this is a legitimate process. All of it is lies and, and falsehoods that are being perpetrated by mainstream media.